Hello Lizzie here. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to make Serafina and Serafina is our autumn slash Halloween inspired little lap quilt or little tabletop runner, something exciting that you can put out for Halloween but I'm going to make it in blues so maybe that's really suitable for Christmas or any other time of year but the pattern's great and it gives that kind of spidewebbery look that's such a word. Anyway have a look at that absolutely glorious. It's all pieced together with two and a half inch strips and we've got some stipple quilting on there as well. Now in the instructions for Serafina all of the details are there of what you need to cut, all of the sizes and pattern pieces as well and you'll see as we go through this what that looks like. Um, so don't forget if you haven't seen the pattern before you can go to my website lizzycurtis.com and download the pattern and the full instructions and of course you get this great video as well to help you along in your sewing journey. So let's just put Serafina Mark 1 to one side, there we go. And like I said I'm doing mine in blue and some of it I've already prepped but I'm going to talk you through how we do one segment because this is made up of uh, six segments because it's a hexagon and there's one that I've already prepared which we'll have a look uh, at in a little while. There's your pattern pieces, you get four pattern pieces which you just tape together, again we'll look at that in a little while. Um, you need binding and sashing and all those sort of usual things, you need a hexagon to go in the middle, again all the patterns are there for you. So. When we start out, we'll have a look perhaps on the overhead, that would be a good idea. You need to cut the certain strips, certain length strips. So I lay, I'll lay these out so you can see what they look like. And they all go in a particular way, but we also put sashing in between. So a good idea is to cut all six layers that you need, like this. And they're divided up into three lots. You'll see what I mean as we go along. And these are the sizes that you need. Now actually this is quite generous because when we cut into it you're going to cut quite a bit away, at least an inch on both sides. So if you want to be a little bit more frugal then by all means trim these back a little bit. But don't forget your pattern piece, your template needs to fit over the top of that to cut it. So the first thing I'm going to do is right size together with that, so the first small piece, let me just move that up. That first small piece was right sized together on the second smallest piece. So I'm just going to bring it over, I'm going to take it to my machine, I'm going to stitch all the way along, okay? Um, and then we're going to stitch those two pieces to the third piece and that's where we'll stop for the moment. So I'll just move these out of the way and I'll just bring in the machine. Here we go. So it's just those first two layers. Make sure you've got right sides together. Now you don't have to go right up to the um, end of your fabric. Just start where your smallest piece begins. So quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I do suggest that you press in between, but we'll do the three and then we'll press. I'll switch my iron on ready. There we go, medium heat. We'll spring the ironing board up as well, just so we're good to go. There we go. So now I'm stitching my third piece onto the second smallest piece. So we're building a pyramid. If you kind of keep that in your mind, then you, you can't go wrong. So you're building a pyramid. You're kind of working from the top down. <laughs> So just make sure your fabrics are lined up nicely. I'll just cut that off, there we go. So there's our three pieces put together, so I just need to give that a nice little press. Um, and like with anything like this, you're going to press the to the dark side, if, if that's what you want to do, if you want to sort of do it as people suggest. Um, and then just flip it over and make sure that's all beautifully laying flat. It, it does make a difference when you're quilting if there's no bulky seams and twisted seams. I'm going to leave my iron on for the moment. So there's my three pieces together. 
okay now in the instructions it tells you about creating some sashing and that sashing is um it, all the measurements are there i'm just going to pick a small piece because obviously i've made quite a bit of mine already so i've got some pieces left over and all i've done is i've ironed a quarter of an inch over each side let me show you here so that's just been ironed to the middle a quarter of an inch so all I'm going to do is actually lay this over the top of my third piece. So let me show you this way. Don't forget we're building a pyramid. We're going that way, going smallest to largest. So there's my bit of sashing. I'm not doing a seam as such, but I am going to top stitch this in place. And if I flip this over, I want you to have a look that my the raw edge of my strip, the last strip that I created, is going onto the raw edge of my, my, my sashing. So if I just actually bring this up nice and neatly. So it's taking it to the middle of my sashing. There we go, you can see that better now. So when we put the next piece on, we're actually going to make sure that it meets that raw edge. Um, let me quickly show you. That next piece will go exactly like that over the top and those two raw edges will meet together but we'll end up with a beautiful piece of sashing. Now you could stitch this from the back so it you can see exactly where your your raw edge is meeting together. Um, I like to stitch from the front because it gives me a neater finish and I can control it. So all I'm doing here is I'm lining up the raw edge of my sashing that's in the centre and the raw edge of my fabric, okay? So um, just as I showed you a moment ago, and then I'm top stitching that in place. So I'm just lining up that raw edges again. And once you've done one of these, you'll absolutely sail through. It's, uh, it's lovely and neat. So that's our first part of the sashing done. So now what we need to do, we go on the overhead again so you can see. So that's the seam I've just stitched here. So with this second piece of fabric, we want the right side facing down. And then we're just placing it over the top and we're going to top stitch that in place. Again, a quarter of an inch away from that raw edge there, just as we normally would. Um, but I'm going to pop it under the machine. and. Um, and all you have to do is just keep an eye on the fact that it's a quarter of an inch in to that raw edge into the centre of the sashing. And just keep lifting up your fabric, lifting up your sashing and make sure that's sitting straight. And by all means pin this um, or, or use quilters tape to, to literally glue it down and then stitch. But having done a few of these now, I'm fairly confident with getting these lined up. So, and that gives us that lovely cobwebby look to the quilt. Okay, so there's our second piece, piece installed. And I've got a funny feeling I might have to move that because that's longer that edge. I'm going to check with my template. I think I'll be okay. So just make sure that your next piece of fabric is again central to the whole design. So we're just then going to stitch the remaining couple of pieces on and don't forget quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then we'll get the iron and give this a nice iron. So that's our next piece. So you can see how that's building up, how that looks. And then we're just putting the last piece on now. So I've kind of graduated the, the light to dark. You could do it the other way around, dark to light. It's up to you. And you could use all different colors as well. I just choose to use the same tones. I think it looks really nice. And there we have our pieces, our six strips. So I'll just bring my iron in. 
make sure it's switched on yes so I'll just give that sashing a nice press and I'll just flip these over as well and we'll, we'll take them all the same way so it's nice and neat <clears throat> and you can set your seam if you want to so setting the seam is just making sure that the, the thread goes into the, the fabric really so again let's just turn that around and just iron that out it's a good uh, it's a good habit to get into to keep pressing every single part especially with quilting don't use any steam just use a dry iron okay that's lovely I'm really pleased with that so the next stage is to actually cut our template or use our template to cut our design so if I leave it in the middle there you'll see that so this is the template you've got and you'll find that we've got a little gap top and bottom which is perfectly fine and all we're going to do is put our ruler on here and cut all the way up to the top there and just continue that shape again the same here so you can see I'm being quite generous with the fabric with the, with the measurements so even though I didn't get one of those in the centre, this one, there's, it, there's enough fabric each side. So I'm just going to turn that around to suit me. And then I'm going to stand. I don't know about you, but I have to stand to cut. I'll try not to get my head in the way. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut all the way from the bottom. I've got a 12 inch ruler here. So I can discard all of that. Try and keep that lined up. Just move it around to suit you, but just be careful. You might want to put some temporary glue on here, a spray glue, just to hold that in place. And again, just line up. Start from that outside edge and just continue down, just like that. Okay. So, using the template that's provided for you in the pattern, put that away now, we've cut ourselves the perfect segment. Now what you need to do now is to actually join these two segments together. I've already done four, these are the last two, okay? We're going to use exactly the same technique that I just did to put the white sashing in. And this time again we're going to use, we're going to use that sashing, I've got a longer piece this time. And it's the same technique. So if I, if I turn this around so you can see it from the overhead. So it's the same technique. You're going to lie the raw edges of your segment to the raw edge in the center of your sashing at the back. So if you can see, if I open that up, that's the width of your sashing. And those two edges have been folded into the middle and pressed. And then all I'm going to do is put this over the top and I'm going to machine that down I'm going to top stitch all the way down there making sure that the center of that sashing those raw edges in the center meet up with the raw edge of the segment once I've done that one I'll attach this segment to this binding so we'll do one thing at a time I'll just trim this down to size so it just doesn't get in the way too much So let's bring in the machine and like I say once you've done this once or twice you'll you'll soon you'll soon you'll sail through this it's not difficult it's very repetitive um, it's really quite a nice make um, it's quite uh, relaxing because you've got all the the templates and the patterns and the sizes so there's nothing to worry about and you've got this video to help you so I'm just lining up that raw edge with the centre of my sashing. So I'm taking it all the way down. I'm not stretching anything. Don't forget, because we've cut this on an angle, this, this panel, you, you might find it will stretch because it's obviously on the bias. Um, so just be gentle with it. This sashing is not bias, it's just straight of the grain sashing. So it won't stretch, 
but your panel may well. So just be gentle. And there we go. So there's one half done. So I'm just now going to attach the other segment. So again, all I'm going to do, if we look on the overhead, you can see, I'm literally laying that over the top, making sure that meets and then just top stitching all the way down. Just make sure it is quarter of an inch underneath that sashing. Um, if I lift it up, you'll see. Probably come, wants to come over a wee bit. Um, and just try and get your, your um, strips lined up so when you machine it, they look nice and neat. So the sashing kind of disguises it a little bit if you're out a little bit, so don't worry about it. Um, so now we're just going to stitch that other seam down, that other side of the panel down. And again, I'm just going to, <laughs> I'm just going to lift up my panel and my sashing. I didn't quite catch that, so let's start that again. Once you've got your needle in your work, phew, <laughs> it's like an anchor. So just keep an eye on those strips. That's the only thing I would say to you. Just keep an eye on those strips. Don't push it or pull it or tug it. Just let it sit nicely on the bed of your machine. And try and get those white sashing as they meet to meet up. Um, and like I said, do, do pin this or use your quilt. Well, you won't be able to use your quilting clips on this part, but you'll be able to pin and just pin at strategic points, you know, where the seams meet. So there we are. I've got a thread there, which will annoy me. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to press this so it's gorgeous. Like I say, this is quite key to quilting and pat well, patchwork is to press and to keep it really flat and tidy. Um, it'll, it'll give you a better finish overall. Your seams will meet better and you won't have to do so much work when you come to quilt all the layers together because it'll already be lying flat. And already that looks 100% better than what it did two minutes ago because I've pressed it. There we are, can you see how beautiful that looks? So all you need to do now is to join it on to the other four pieces. So when I bring this in, let me show you. So here we go. There's my four pieces of my spider's web. Looks more like a snowflake, doesn't it? But when we put it down on the desk, you'll see some of this, you won't see all of it. It's big but um, it saves the camera being pulled back let's just move the iron so on my you'll just see it nicely there um, all I need to do now is to actually add that segment so if, if in fact it's better on the overhead isn't it so all I need to do is add that segment let's just trim that away so on this side I've already got one piece attached so all I'm going to do is just bring that over and top stitch, just like we did before. With this one, I've got to add a new piece. There we go. And I shall do exactly the same. Go down from the top to the bottom on one side and then repeat it on the other. OK, so that's that's it done. Um, the next stage is to put the hexagon in the middle. But let's do one thing at a time. I'll stitch these bits together and I'll see you in just a minute. So as you can see, I've pieced all of those together. So all my segments are complete. You'll notice there's the hole in the middle. That was totally intentional because what I didn't want you to get was lots and lots of seams meeting in the center of that, that quilt there and then creating bulk. And you're gonna to have to quilt. You don't have to quilt all across the, the seams right in the center, but, it, but still it adds that bulk. And I wanted to avoid that. I wanted to make it so it was really lovely and flat. So we've left a hole. <laughs> we have to fill the hole now. So um, you will in the pattern get a hexagon template. So that's all in there for you. But if we have a look here at the overhead, you'll see that I've got my hexagon cut out. I'll give it a nice press. 
Now my, my well it's quite, it's like an ivory colour really, it's not really white and it definitely has a right and a wrong side. <sighs> I think that is possibly the wrong side. The, the trouble with artificial light, which I have here in the studio, it's always difficult to tell, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> anyway, let's just turn this over. So you're turning over um, uh, not a generous quarter of an inch, okay? Not a generous quarter of an inch. It's going to be a scant quarter of an inch. So just keep your eye on that. And what you'll find is if this is, if your seam allowance that you're folding over is too big, it may not fit your hole that we've created on the quilt. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Um, and if you want to, if you want to be a little bit more generous, then cut a slightly bigger hexagon. Um, you know, my stitching is going to be different to your stitching. Um, so just bear that in mind and don't uh, don't get cross with yourself. It's if it, if it doesn't, if it's not quite right, it could well be your fold overs that are too big. OK, so you could revisit those. But once we've got that fairly OK, I mean, a nice steam would be great. And if you've actually if you've got some nice starch spray, this is the time to get it out because that makes such a huge difference. Careful you don't burn it. <laughs> so the next thing we need to do is obviously fill our hole. So if we bring the little topper in here, isn't this gorgeous? Um, a, a steam press will get that flat, OK, but I'm not going to waste my time doing that for you. I, I promise you, if you put your iron over that centre part and steam it, or, or just give it a nice dry iron, that will lay a lot flatter. Now at the moment I'm not too worried about my tails, or I'm ignoring my tails, but what I'm going to do is put my hexagon over the top, and I'm sure that's the wrong way around, <laughs> but in this light you can't tell. <laughs> so I've laid my hexagon over the top and you can see we, we've got about a quarter of an inch sort of difference. If I lift that up, and put this down again. We're about a quarter of an inch difference. Now to keep that absolutely in place, I'm going to use quilter's tape. This is my friend. If you haven't got any, you've never tried it before, it's cheap as chips. I always cut off for the, the first inch. Um, and just pop it around the edge of your hexagon. And if you're, look, listen, if your edges don't meet up, please don't worry about it, because you're going to cover them up. And it's all about, you know, how the, what the tension of your machine is, whether you've stretched your fabric a little bit as you stitch down. We talked about that as we stitched. Um, I really, really don't want you to worry about any of this. Um, like I say, a good steam truly is your best friend. Serious. So look, I mean, I suppose I could have done it in one piece, but I like doing it like that. <laughs> so there we are. So there's my pieces down. Give them a lovely squidge with your nail or, or a tool of some description just to get that glue that's in underneath that tape, that, that paper backing, um, to stick to your fabric. OK, it will, but you, you need to take the backing off. So just get a pin. I use my, my pokey tool, my stiletto, and you're just going to lift these all up. OK, take your time. No rush. I haven't got a, clock, a stop clock on you. <laughs> Try to enjoy it. Relax those shoulders. <laughs> oh dear, we're all guilty of the, the raised shoulder syndrome. You wait till you start quilting. In actual fact, with the quilting part, I mean, I shall stipple quilt because I just find that a very effective way to quilt. But you could do all sorts. You could stitch in the ditch or you could shadow quilt all the way around. You can, there's all sorts you can do. Right, so there's my um, hexagon. And so what you're going to do is line up as best you can. I mean, perhaps do the points first. And obviously, you know, if this was if this was pressed really well, we wouldn't have all of these raw edges sticking out. But get the first lot of points down. Don't worry about the rest of it. That that will all come. It'll all sort itself out. And just literally glue it down. Um, gosh, it can't get any easier, can it? Um, so I'm just going to move that around so it's better for me. And then we're just going to top stitch it. We're not doing anything fancy. We're keeping all our layers singular at the moment. So again, I'm just going to move that around. You can see how it's looking. You can adjust as you go. So you can see how that's attaching itself. And if you feel by when you've got to this stage, 
you're not happy with it this is not permanent glue okay you can actually just peel it away and start again so fairly happy with that so far just got that last little edge to do and just make those minor adjustments and again I'll just lift this off and tuck that edge in if you've ironed it it'll it'll go back to where it was that's the great thing about giving it a good press and if I'm not careful I've got a little pleat going on there because I didn't press it and that's what I said about giving it a good press it kind of puts it in check right that's not too bad not too bad so I'm going to pop that under the machine and just top stitch it I'm still fiddling with that bit there I think I'm fairly happy with that now <laughs> she says moving it again I'm tempted to take it off and, and give it a, a steam because I know that'll really help so as long as I've got my points there all sorted out I'm fairly happy with the rest of it so all we need to do is pop it under the machine and top stitch I'm still not happy about that bit let's just get that laying flat a bit more and, and actually when you're stitching round you can adjust quite a bit of that so all we're going to do is top stitch all the way around and then we're next is our next is our quilting if you've never done quilting before I absolutely don't want you to start panicking <laughs> because there's so many ways that you could quilt this like I say I choose to stip a quilt you don't have to do that at all you could just stitch in the ditch so just carefully work your way around make sure when you get to those points that you make a point and we'll just come along here I'm just still fiddling with that bit <laughs> um, and also the other thing is if there's any glue showing then it'll this is wash away so just wash away so you mustn't worry about that either so I'm just going to lift this up as well and tuck that under there we go I think I'm a little happy with that now that's it take your time and like I say pin it you can't use your clips but you can pin it and just try and get right into the corners and you may want to position this a little better than mine it's not quite in the middle but um, I'll let you be the judge of that so when you come back to where you started I didn't do a back stitch because this is ni a nice pretty top stitch so one two break your thread okay so that's our hexagon done in the middle. Really need to iron it. I was tempted before. And one part of me wishes I had. I'm going to use my big mat. If you've got a wool pressing mat, please, please use it all the time. They are amazing. So now give that a nice press because you want this to be well behaved for when you start your quilting, okay, which is the next step. So a quick mention about my gold club if you haven't joined already there's no time like the present just pop to my website find the link that says gold members sign up here and then you have access to my facebook weekly events which is absolutely amazing my girls love it and of course you get the free patterns as well so if you want more information there is actually a video on youtube that you can have a little look at And don't worry about, you can't overpress these things, not at this stage, not in my head, okay? Somebody might tell you different, but in my world, you don't have to. So, you can now cut your tails away, just to neaten up the back, if you want. By the time you've put your wadding on here, you won't see those tails, but maybe aesthetically, you might want to cut them away. Now that hexagon is well and truly attached, it's not going anywhere. So if I lift that up, hopefully you'll see what that looks like. I love it. It's going to be my favourite, I think. I shouldn't have favourites. So what we need to do now is to get our wadding. The next layer is the wadding. 
and then the backing. So I'm going to go away and cut those to size. Then I'll come back and I'll show you that and then I'll start to do the stipple quilting and then I'll just I'll just carry on till I'm finished. But I'll let you go away and have a cup of tea. Um, you can see the finished thing. Well, I've got to do the binding, of course. So I'm going to go away and do the wadding and the backing and then I'll show you what I've done. So here we are. I've got my special white gloves on. I'll talk about them in a second. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to do jazz hands now. So I've layered up my quilt top, okay? So I've got my quilt top on the top. I've then got my wadding underneath there. That's my second layer, that's my middle layer, I suppose. And then underneath that, I've got my backing and I've trimmed it to about an, an inch away from the edge of my quilt top. So the backing and the wadding is about an inch bigger than my quilt top, okay? And you end up with a lovely quilt sandwich. So now we're ready to quilt. Now, really, 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 this is down to you, okay? So um, you can do stipple quilting like me if you're confident with that, with free motion. So uh, if you're not confident with that, put your walking foot on. This is the time to dust it off and get it out and put it on your machine. And then you can just um, quilt, you can just stitch in the ditch. So you're following the lines of your um, sashing, your sashing and your strips or you can do like shadow quilting where you can sort of do a quarter of an inch inside of that if you want to. Because it's a spider's web you could do lines radiating out but you'd have to measure that and get that really um, precise. But I'm just stipple quilting. Now a couple of things, got my jazz hands on. So these are special quilting gloves that has silicon tips on and it really grabs the fabric. It allows me to move my fabric around and, and be quite relaxed with my free motion. Underneath here, I've got my big, big extension table on my machine. If you don't have one of these, please don't fret, don't go and buy one. I want you just to experience what your machine will do as it stands now, okay? Not going to buy extra stuff. But with this machine, it's got a very, very narrow bed near the needle. So I just need a little bit of extra um, sort of leverage, I suppose, to hold my quilt in place. I need that stability so it all lies flat. And then I've also got a slider mat and that slider mat sticks to my machine and allows my fabric to really glide and move around. I mean, this is lovely and shiny and smooth, but the slider mat does help as well. But again, please don't go and buy one. Just experience your machine as it is, as it stands. OK, I'm just giving you a, perhaps a more professional option. So I'm doing free motion. So I've dropped my feed dogs. If you haven't got any feed dogs to drop or rather you haven't got a lever to do that, set your stitch length on zero and forget about dropping your feed dogs. It doesn't matter. Um, I've got my free motion foot on, so it's an embroidery stroke darning foot and it has an open toe. It's like a horseshoe. So you can see, I like to use that one. Other people like to use the solid circles. It's entirely up to you. Um, that's just me. I've got silver thread on my machine. Yeah, I know I'm really pushing out the boat because some machines hate metallic threads. This machine is okay, touch wood. I've loosened my tension just a little bit so it doesn't really pull that thread through because it will just snap. We'll see how we get on. I've also got the silver thread in my bobbin. Um, you could use bobbin fill instead. It's perfectly acceptable. If, you're, if this is the first time you've done any quilting at all, just please use your regular Gutterman thread or you know, polyester thread, your cotton thread, whatever you normally use, just use that, but with a matching colour to your little quilt top. So maybe whites. I wouldn't go dark blue because you'll see that a lot more. I would stick with your whites and pale greys and pale blues if, if that's the colour scheme you've gone for. Um, so that's it really. Um, what you could do, I mean with this machine I really don't have to worry about bottom threads, top threads. Um, I'm just going to, I did a little tester piece. I'm just going to start where I left off. I pop my needle down and what you could do is bring that bottom thread up. Now it probably won't with this machine because I've just cut my threads off but We'll see. It's just brought up the tiniest little tails, um, but that's, that's my machine. Um, but you want, obviously you don't want to have a bird's nest underneath here. So it's just a case of cutting your threads, keeping it neat. Um, lower your foot down, your feed dogs are down if that's what facility you've got. And then just relax and you'll notice if your shoulders go up like that, breathe and bring them down. If you get a bad back, walk away for half an hour. 
Um, it shouldn't take too long to stipple quilt, probably even half an hour maybe, half, three quarters of an hour depending. Keep your speed up and keep moving your fabric in a gentle rhythmic, rhythmic? rhythmic manner. <laughs> Don't get hung up about it in other words. Um, so I'm just going to start off here. A couple of stitches just to anchor that first one. So I'll just keep continuing stitching this until it's all done. I, I kind of usually start from the middle and work out but I would do put do this in segments divide the whole thing into four and perhaps do that quarter first then move on to the second quarter i wouldn't try to do the whole lot in one go i just move in bite-sized chunks so all i'm going to do is start stitching keep your speed up and don't move your fabric too fast just enjoy it i know it's difficult <laughs> unless you've been doing this a little while but keep that speed up and slow down a bit there when you come to the sashing just make sure needle down make sure that your foot doesn't catch that and, and fold it over and then just work your way into the middle just gently i wouldn't start there i'd start at a side seam i start at just at the edge of the sashing and again, when you come to those edges, just make sure your foot doesn't catch them because it'll want to. And then just be brave because there's some bits that are going to be more prominent than the others. Oh, that's it. Fabulous. So once you've got past those seams or you're not near those seams, you can just enjoy the journey. Just be careful of that sashing because it will fold over. So just spend a moment making sure it doesn't. So with a silver thread I think it'll look very wintry. So as I'm coming to that sashing I'm just lifting it up. Now you won't be able to see any of this until I'm finished. I'm not taking it off the machine to show you until I'm done. Just watch those shoulders. I can feel them coming up. And just stop and rest if you want to. Adjust. Careful of that sashing again. And just keep that speed up. You may not want to because it sounds really like you're going speedy speedy but you're controlling the movement of this nobody else i'm just uh, now doing the last little segment working from the middle to the outside and that means that you don't get any puckering um, as long as you've uh, put your layers back stuck together nicely you shouldn't do but just in case i would go from the middle out on each section and when you come up to the top when you come to the outside try and work your way back to the middle and then out again uh, don't worry about it too much well i'll just finish this little section off here um, so as before we're just keeping our speed up and just moving the fabric and if you want to stop and adjust stop and adjust Make sure that your, your quilt is nice and comfortably placed on your on the bed of your machine here. Nice big waves. Move the fabric quite freely. Again, I'm getting stuck here, so I'm just adjusting bringing my shoulders down mm -hmm. it's easy for those shoulders to creep up again adjust if you need to so when we finish this little piece here I'll just take my stitches right to the edge of the quilt. We don't want to see any any loose ends. And I'll take my speed up. I do love doing this. And 
off the edge of my quilt. So let's just move this big old machine now, put the table on there away, take my gloves off. Right, so that's all quilted now. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Maybe it's better on the overhead, I don't know. You can see that stipple quilt in there, look, you can see it all. So it needs a good press again. The next thing we need to do is to, sorry, is to actually trim all of our fabrics away. So not the top, obviously, but the backing and the wadding. Um, and again, just use your rotary cutter or your scissors. Use your scissors um, if you haven't got a rotary cutter. Um, you're, you're going to put the binding on next, so um, you're going to cover up any jaggedy edges. So I'm going to try and do this sitting down and just cut your way through. I've actually got a really weak shoulder now, so it's difficult for me to cut sitting down, but we'll get there. And just line this all up. And if you find your your top fabric is just slightly wavy, it might well be, I have got a bin just there, um, then just cut it straight, cut it straight. Don't, uh, don't pander to its waviness, just cut it straight. But this isn't too bad at all. Sometimes they get a little bit um, twisted when you're quilting. Um, I shouldn't worry about it. It's your masterpiece. Okay, so we're nearly there. So don't forget we've got six sides to cut. And it's always a good idea to have a lovely sharp blade on your rotary cutter. And also, I was just about to say, remind you that um, put a, a new needle into your machine as well before you start quilting. Um, I use, well on this I used a, a 14 or, um, let's see, a bit there, uh, uh, a 90 14. But you could use uh, whatever suits for your fabric. You'll soon find out if your needle doesn't like it, it'll let you know. Your tension might be out, your stitches might be a bit loose. Um, I don't know, this, this machine will tell you if it doesn't like something. And sometimes it is just the needle. So there we are. So there is our quilt now tidied and cut. Looks amazing, doesn't it? I'm really happy with it. Uh, but now we need to do the binding. Okay, so we have the binding pieces here. And like I said, I've got three lengths. So I'm going to stitch the two long lengths together first. So it's right sides together. Crossing these over at a 90 degree, like that. And then stitching from that corner to that corner and trimming. And that will give you a beautiful 45 degree angle. So straight across. Obviously you can pin this if you want to. So it's nice and neat. I'll just switch my iron on so we can neaten up our binding. So just pop that through. And then I'm just going to join the short end again to the end of my binding. Like I said, I'll give you all the instructions and sizes, etc., in the pattern. And again, I'm doing, I'm overlapping by a quarter of an inch, but then I'm going corner to corner. Now, although this is a hexagon, um, and you think, well, uh, what, what do I need to do at the corners, you know, for the, the turning of the binding? It's, it's pretty much the same as what you would do if you had a 90 degree angle to, to fold over and create a lovely corner. Um, but obviously it's a slightly less extreme angle. So I'll just open up my seam because I like my binding where there's a seam to be nice and flat and to sort of distribute that thickness. So give that a, a nice press. Make sure that's nice and flat. Find the other one. Open that seam up. You might, you might not want to do this, you might want to just 
fold that seam over to one particular side and that's absolutely fine. So again, give that a nice press, well, you know, an, a dry iron. Okay, so that's our binding ready. So if we get our lovely quilt top, bring the machine in so it's more comfortable for me. Now I don't start at a corner, I start about halfway between corner to corner, okay? And I leave a tail of about, well in the pattern I think I say 10 inches, but I, I kind of just guess it. I suppose that's that's about, well, <laughs> that near enough is 10, so start from 10. So you're not going to stitch from here, you're going to stitch start stitching about the 10 inches along the tail. So if I put that, up, put that under my machine, little back stitch just to hold, just one or two stitches is fine. And so we just get this binding out of the way on the right side. This is where you need a bit of a big work surface. And then just quarter of an inch seam allowance right up to the corner now you're going to stop quarter of an inch from the actual corner forget that it's a certain angle just forget all that but about a quarter of an inch just do a back stitch there because we don't want that to open up raise your needle lift your presser foot turn your quilt top and that's okay if, this, if the thread comes out honestly that once you got, get to do this a bit more it, you can leave the needle in and you can control your threads more but while you're still learning this is fine so I want you to fold this back on itself it won't be like a 90 degree it'll be a shallower fold back but all I need you to do is to make sure that you've got a point in that corner and you'll parallel with the side. So if I bring that out from the machine, you might just see that on the overhead, that it's it's a shallower fold here. And we're going to start right at the edge there, quarter of an inch, and come along. So I'll go all the way around until I come back to my tail and then I'll show you what I do to finish that off. Okay, so I'm just coming to that last corner now, my last, my sixth hexagon corner. So I'm just gonna turn that corner. So just bringing my fabric around. Again, I'm doing exactly the same as I did when I started. Quarter of an inch, back stitch, needle up, twist my fabric around do that shallow fold and then from that corner I'm just going to stitch um, I don't know a couple of inches maybe about there okay so I think this is where we need to go to overhead so you can see this a lot better I'm going to fold my quilt in half so it's a little bit more comfortable for me so you should have two nice long ends here, one about eight, ten inches and one, I don't know, about six or seven inches there. And what we need to do is to cross these over and overlap by two and a half inches because of our binding was two and a half inches. So that's what we overlap. So what we need is our ruler, which I shall just get. And my scissors here. And so well, this is obviously where we stop stitching. So I can bring this one over and this is, this is the shorter end. So I'm just going to trim this because I, this has got a selvage on it and we don't want the selvage. So I'm going to use this as my, as my end, if you like. And so I'm going to overlap this by two and a half inches. So if we measure, I think that's probably better if we measure. Let me just get a pin. So I bring my ruler in. Let's see, get it so we can see it. That's upside down, back to front. So two and a half inches is, there's the two, there's the half, it's there. So let's just put a pin in there. You can make a mark with a heat erasable pen if you like. 
and then bring this one over and just literally mark it so it's it's there so i know that this piece of fabric is overlapping this piece by two and a half inches now that's actually quite near where i've finished stitching it's i know i don't know if it's going to be hard for you to see because it's white thread and white binding so i'm actually going to move this along a little bit because i don't think i'll have enough uh, a movement so i'm going to and this is what you do this is this is how how it how it works so i'm just going to snip a little bit off here not much tell about an inch i'm going to do the same again so i'm going to measure my two and a half inches and i'm just going to bring that over there's my two and a half inches there. Okay, so when we look at it, in fact, if we look at it on the mat, you can see there's my half mark there and there's one inch, there's two inches, okay? So what that means is, when I lift that up, that's overlapping by two and a half inches, all right? It's just there, look. And that's the two and a half inches. So that's where I'm going to cut. I'm just going to pop my thumb there for a moment and I'm going to cut. I know you have to be brave. So now we've got two ends, okay, two ends still folded. So what I want you to do is right sides together and I want you to do that 45 degree angle again. So we'll keep it on the overhead while I do this. So open that one up and open this one up and, and there isn't much leeway here at all and in fact if you undid a little bit of this it would be much much better and much much easier but we're going to just see what we can do so I'm right sides together don't forget so my folds my creases if you like you're, you've got the kind of mountain crease going to be sitting on top of each other and you're just going to cross those over and I'm going to get that corner absolutely precise so there we are that's precise i'm going to bring my pins in um, and i'm just going to pin those pieces together that corner okay now like i said it, it it's just a little bit awkward okay just a little bit awkward like i say it would be easier for me if i undid this stitching here but i'm not going to <laughs> so again just make sure that your edges are absolutely precise so just bring those together and you'll move these pins as you stitch. So we're going to stitch, and I'll show you in just a second when I've finished pinning. We're going to stitch diagonally, just like we did before when we joined the binding together. You're going to stitch from this point here across there. Okay, so you're stitching from there across to there. And that's how it looks when we actually finish stitching and cutting it be perfect so I'll just bring the machine in like I say it would be easier if I undid that stitching but I know I can do it but give yourself a little bit of a, a leeway with this but the pinning is is essential so those layers are absolutely perfect get your needle in do a little back stitch but get your needle in that way we know we've got all those layers caught and I'm really happy now to take most of my pins out. I'm just flattening that little section. It's like a, a square really, and I'm just going to aim for the other point. When I get near, I'm just gonna take that last pin out. Little back tack there. And that's how it looks. If we look at the overhead, you'll see how that looks. It's just the same as you did before. There's my diagonal stitching there. So if we get the scissors and cut, and like I say, I normally open this seam up, so we'll see how we get on. I'll just finger press it open. I could get my iron in, but we're just about finished now, so. Get your iron in and then you can press that so it's utterly gorgeous and flat give it a finger press if your iron's still on i don't think mine is might be hot i just 
warm enough just to give that a little crease and there we are there's our perfect join there okay just make sure you've got your raw edges together so all I need to do now is stitch from here to there and then we're done and it's just a case of then is the hand stitching which actually I really love you may not you may hate it but and actually I know a lot of professionals who machine stitch their binding over but I, I like to hand stitch so again there we are so there's the last bit done oops it's not that big but it seems to be destroying my desk so then it's just a case of pushing those corners out pushing all the corners out and it'll naturally crease, do you see? Naturally makes that lovely corner. And then fold it back and hand stitch. And then that's done. But what you could do is just get your quilting clips in and just pop them all the way along and then hand stitch it. So there we are, apart from the hand stitching, it's all done just push those corners out it just naturally wants to, to crease and fold back and it's a bit like when you do a regular square a rectangular quilt pushing those corners out and it finds its way it really does so there we go and I'll leave it at that because it's the hand stitching next and so you you take too long <laughs> if you've got a couple of hours come sit with me you can do it with me so there we are. So now I would just go round and um, put my quilting clips on. I'd probably give it a press as well so that edge is really gorgeous and then just hand stitch it but isn't it lovely? And I'll show you a picture of it uh, when it's done. So there we are, there is Serafina. I absolutely love it. I love it in the blues. I especially love it <gasps> in the Halloween-y colours, autumn colours. Like a spider web. This one I think looks like a snowflake. So that is Serafina. So um, don't forget to go to my website, download the pattern and have a, have a little bit of fun making this for yourself. And I hope you make loads.